Welcome mathematicians to this video. In today's video, we'll be looking at linear inequalities. So you have in front of you on the screen, on the left-hand side, a linear equation, y equals three on two x plus three. And on the right-hand side, a linear inequality, y is less than or equal to three on two x plus three. What's the main difference? Well, on the top half, you can see we have an equals sign on the left-hand side, and this represents a linear equation. It's got an equal sign, values on the left, values on the right. This on the right-hand side is a linear inequality. It doesn't have an equal sign, it has something other than. It's a different symbol. This particular symbol represents less than or equal to. So graphically, a linear equation represents a straight line going through the two x and y intercepts continuing on above and below. On the right-hand side, the linear inequality it looks very, very similar, except it's all values that are less than or equal to. So it's all this colored region underneath the linear equation, or what we call in this case, the linear inequality. Let's examine this further. Let's consider a number line. Number line is a straight line that represents all possible values of x, with zero in the center in this case, going onwards to the positive to the right, and going onwards to the negative to the left. This is a number line. Some basics, some linear inequality symbols. This symbol, little arrow to the left, means less than. Arrow to the left with a line underneath means less than or equal to. Arrow to the right means greater than. An arrow to the right with a line underneath means greater than or equal to. Let's look at some examples. So consider the linear inequality x, arrow to the right, 1. This statement means that x can be any value greater than 1. On our number line, we represent this with a circle around the 1 and a line continuing on to the right with an arrow. This means all the numbers greater than 1. The fact that this is a hollow circle means it doesn't include 1, only numbers greater than 1. Example number two, consider the linear inequality x arrow to the left two. This statement means that x can be any value less than two. So on our number line, we have a circle around the two with an arrow going to any number less than two. Arrow to the left continues on. And again, the circle is not filled. So this circle represents all numbers less than two, but doesn't include two. Example number three, consider the linear inequality x arrow to the right with an underscore negative 2. This statement means that x can be any value greater than or equal to negative 2. So on the number line, we have the number 2, this time filled. This represents the number negative 2 inclusive and all values greater than. So all numbers greater than or equal to negative 2. So the filled means this number is included in this set. And the arrow to the right means it's all numbers greater than. Example number four, consider the linear equation x arrow to the left underscore negative one. This statement means that x can be any value less than or equal to one. So on our number line, it is less than or equal to number one. The solid circle represents equal to as well. Example number five, consider the linear inequality and here's our statement. This statement means that x can be any value greater than negative three and less than two. So if we look at it from an x's perspective, x is greater than the open end of this arrow, negative three, but less than two. Always read it from the x's perspective. So we're to graph this. This means the negative three is one bookend, that's our lower end, and the two is the other bookend, the positive two. So it can be greater than negative three, so doesn't include, isn't greater than or equal to, it's just greater than, so three is not included, greater than negative three and less than two. So it starts at negative three, not including negative three, and it finishes at two, but not including two. Example number six, consider the linear inequality. And we've got it written down here. Let's make sense of this. This statement means that X can be any value greater than negative three and less than or equal to two. So from the x's perspective, I've got an open end here. x is greater than negative three, but it's less than or equal to two. So negative three and two will be our two bookends. So the negative three does not have an equal sign in the symbol as well, so it's not including negative three. So its value is greater than negative three, but less than or equal to two. Because the circle above the two is filled, it also includes two in our number set. Example seven, consider the linear inequality. This statement means that x can be any value greater than or equal to negative three and less than two. So let's look at it from an x perspective. x is greater than or equal to negative three and less than two. So our bookends will be negative three and two. 
There's no equal sign here, so the two is hollow, it's not filled. And there is an equal sign on the left-hand side, so this three is included in the data set. It's filled as well. So our numbers can include anything equal to or greater than negative three and less than two. Finally, let's consider how we go about solving inequalities. When solving linear inequalities, we approach the problem solving exactly the same as a linear equation using the same inverse or reverse operation. So let's look at the first one here. X plus four is greater than or equal to 10. So first of all, let's get rid of the plus four by taking four both the left and the right. And that will leave me with X is greater than or equal to six. And that's our solution. We could sub that in. Let's say X was equal to six. So we put in X equals six. Six plus four is 10, which is greater than or equal to 10. If X was seven, seven plus four is 11, which is greater than or equal to 10. So it does make sense. A second example, 2x take 7 is greater than or equal to 13. First of all, let's get rid of the take 7 by plusing 7 on both the left and the right-hand side. That will cancel out the negative 7 and give us 2x on the left-hand side. 13 plus 7 gives me 20. So I've now got 2x is greater than or equal to 20. The next step, let's get rid of this 2 times x by dividing both sides by 2. That will cancel out and leave me with x is greater than or equal to 10. Let's substitute that value back into x. If x were 10, that would be two times 10 is 20, take away seven is 13, which is greater than or equal to 13. 13 is equal to 13. Let's say x was 11. Sub that in, two times 11 is 22, take away seven is 15, and 15 is indeed greater than or equal to 13. So it holds true. So, so far, all these rules have followed the same as that of the linear equation. The exception is when you multiply or divide by a negative number in which case you must reverse the inequality symbol. So let's have a look. Here I've got negative 5x is less than or equal to 30. I want to divide the negative 5 away so I leave x by itself. So if I divide the left-hand side and the right-hand side by negative 5, that will leave me with an x, and 30 divided by 5 would leave me with 6, a negative 6 because of the negative number. However, when we multiply or divide by a negative number, we have to reverse the inequality symbol. So negative 5x divided by negative 5 will give me x. 30 divided by negative 5 gives me negative 6. And because I divided or multiplied by a negative number, in this case divided, our inequality symbol has to reverse. Let's just check this. And the value of x is greater than or equal to negative 6. So let's say x is negative 6. That's equal to. Let's substitute in x equals negative 6 into our above equation. Negative 5 times negative 6 gives me 30, and the two negatives cancel out. So I've got 30 is less than or equal to 30. That's correct. Let's try another number. Let's say 10. 10 for x. 10 is greater than negative 6. Let's sub in 10 on the left-hand side here. Negative 5 times 10 will give me negative 50, which is less than or equal to 30. So it holds true. We have our correct answer. A final example, 20 take 2x is greater than or equal to 12. This is effectively an invisible plus 20. We don't bother writing the plus 20. So 20 take 20 on the left-hand side will cancel out, and we take 20 on our right-hand side. That leaves us negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 8. At the moment, we have negative 2 times x. To reverse that function, we have to divide both sides by negative 2x. And again, when we divide both sides by a negative number, we have to reverse the inequality symbol. So negative 2x divided by negative 2 gives me x. Negative 8 divided by negative 2, well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and the two negatives cancel out. And because we've divided by negative, we reverse the direction of the inequality sign. So I'm left with the answer of x is less than or equal to 4. So if x has any value less than or equal to 4, this top inequality will hold true. Let's try x equals 4. Let's substitute that in. So if x was equal to 4, we'd have 20 take away 2 lots of 4 is 8. 20 take away 8 is 12. 12 is greater than or equal to 12. Let's try x equals 3. 3 is less than or equal to 4. 20 take away 2 lots of 3, which is 20 take away 6. 20 take away 6 is 14, is greater than or equal to 12. So it holds true. Thank you for watching this video on inequalities. I hope you have a clear understanding of what the symbols represent, how a timeline works, what a filled circle and an empty circle represents, and how to transpose and find solutions for inequalities. If you've enjoyed this video and indeed learned something from it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.